Hey guys, we're in isolation again. So, like everybody, you know, we always ask, how you doing? I got no audience. So, yeah, so you know, I can't pick on any of those uh, those uh, little people there in the, sitting in the front. The Asian guys in the back. The white, the, the white cracker there that's over on the left. That it can't happen because we're in isolation. So, I found a way how I could try to be funny for all you people. And, uh... Hopefully you enjoy this uh, comedy material. You know, maybe, maybe maybe this will make it all the way down to Eddie Murphy and I'll like make this man crap his pants because you know, just like me, my wife always knows how much she despises when I'm sleeping and all of a sudden the farting game gets played. Thank you, Eddie Murphy, for that back in the 1980s with Delirious. I love you, man. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just the reaction she has. I've never seen a lady move so so fast after breaking wind. It's like as if she's gone shoom. Doing the 500 mile, uh, you know, day 200, 500, boom. <laughs> but that, but, the, but that's that's what. Yeah. So we're all stuck in isolation. It's pretty hilariously funny to a certain extent, you know. We get to social distance ourselves. But you see, to a certain extent is those who have social anxiety like myself, which I'm going to talk about in my comedy, actually get to be the world champions of physical distancing. Why? We don't have to go out. It's great. We get to stay home. We don't have to deal with morons or idiots that are walking around outside in the public. Don't have to bump into rude, disrespectful people just because, you know, you're out and about and you're whistling and then, you know, that annoys the crap out of the people. You're not stuck having to, you know, bump into people who get offended, you know, just because you look at them a certain way or you look a certain way, you know, like tattoos, piercings all over your face, you got a weird hairdo one day, you got makeup on, you know, your your face looks a little disfigured, you don't have to worry about none of that. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is after you come out of isolation, it's like, whoo, oh man, some kind of a skunk came in here because it was like, you know, isolation. Who needs to shower? I'm sure I bet you your wife will probably be like, oh, sweetie, yeah, uh, I think you need to go to the shower. If you do not go in the shower right now, uh, I'm calling my lawyer for a divorce. Excuse me? What, what did you say? I heard, I, I caught the sentence of lawyer divorce uh, on the grounds of what, sweetie? You heard me. Uh, no, can you repeat that again? I, I didn't quite hear you. You get into the shower, or there's grounds for divorce. That's the only thing I could probably see ethically wrong with being in isolation. Yeah. But you know what actually I find funny about this isolation? is how you got like, you know, YouTube, Twitter, all those people where it's like, everybody's like, this, 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 this coronavirus is a hoax. This coronavirus is a hoax. Let's just post these YouTube videos. Let's go ahead and post this YouTube video. Let's give our intellectual opinion on it. Oh, cool. I get to go see a YouTube video on, on this coronavirus. Click. Oh, this YouTube video has violated the community standards. Oh, this YouTube video is not allowed to get posted after being fact-checked. Seriously, there's like people, oh, what do you do for a job? Oh, I get paid $50,000 a year just to verify the content that you bullshitters have been posting online. Yep, I get paid $50,000 to do such a thing. So I go through every little thing that you guys post on YouTube, Twitter, and social media, and I'd be like, oh, that's wrong. Sorry. That that violates our community standards. Gotta remove it. It's like I don't know if I'm funny or not. 
But you know what? We're living in a time where, you know, everything's so screwed up, messed up. Going all the foo bar, fucked up beyond all recognition. And you know what? You need laughter in your life. Like, let's seriously, like, come on, laughter. Like, you know, if you can't laugh at the situation at hand, you know, you're probably going to go to hell anyway. It doesn't really matter. Oh, right. Yes. I'm sorry. I apologize. Some people do not might believe in hell. They may believe in other stuff. Because, you know, we got all those people that don't believe in heaven or hell. But we live in a society right now where, you know, they just want everybody to be safe. And I think the best medicine is laughter. And you know what? I've always grown up to in a certain extent where, um, how would you say this? Uh, you know, farts funny. Like, I'm sure ladies probably don't find them funny, but I'm sure guys, they'll probably giggle. You know, you, you cut, break wind, and then make some funny noise, and then you start giggling. Like, there was this one time I was in uh, biology class, so this is grade 11. Funny story, actually. So there was, uh, so we basically had like these kind of octagon desks. And these octagon desks basically is where our workstations were to do our science experiments and stuff like that. So here I am. I like broke wind, so silent and deadly. If you know what part and can smells like, okay, take that, multiply it by 10. So here I cut wind. Trying to not laugh my trying to not laugh. So I'm trying to keep the straightest face as possible. Uh, so I got two of my friends, uh, Johan and Paul Scales, uh, they're sitting beside me. And two seconds after I broke wind, Paul Johan was like, Oh, Paul Scales, what you eat? <laughs> oh, and then one, not even, as soon as he mentioned, as soon as he said Foscal, I literally cracked up laughing so bloody hard, and he was like, John James! Teacher's like, Johan, what seems to be wrong? Do you not smell this shit? It smells like fart in a kid, but ten times worse. And I just couldn't stop laughing. It was unbelievable. The teacher started cracking up laughing too. It was just so priceless. It was like, I think probably the funniest moment I ever had in high school. It was just so good. So, uh, well, I don't know about you guys, but if you like my content, want to hear more content, more comedy, more funny stuff in this isolation, uh, you know, just... Hit the like button. It'll let me know if you guys want more. Okay? If you want, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you do, you don't. Know, doesn't really bother me too much. I'm just doing this for fun. To help my anxiety because I don't know if I could actually stand up in front of an audience and actually be funny because of the fact that I would be too afraid, you know, to offend people because there's, you know, you say stupid shit and it's like, Oh, I just defended that person in the front row because of the fact that it looks like he's got man boobs. Sorry, but you know, some man boob jokes are funny. Could be. Not trying to body shame anybody, it just but it's just like, you know, it's quite funny. You know, it's sort of like, I don't know, but it was like, there's this one thing, that, there was like this one dude, I can't remember exactly where I saw, but it was like, literally I was like, Holy crap, dude's got bigger titties than his wife. I'm just like, yeah, I think you need to see a health care professional if your big ass titties are bigger than your wife. Just because I'm all about healthy living and stuff like that. And that could be a sign that, you know, not trying to body shame anybody, but if your titties are bigger than your wife, you might have a problem. So, if you do like the funny content that I put out, you know, let me know with a like. Cheers. God bless. Happy Easter, everybody, if you celebrate. Peace.